Hello, Graham Roberts here. Welcome to a series of tutorials on how to make a simple game on a computer. Now, I've chosen to make this game on the Windows operating system. We call that a platform. Other platforms that we could have used would be, say, the Apple Mac platform or written the game for console. I'm going to write it on uh, or for the Windows platform because I'm going to use Microsoft Visual C Sharp. I'm using the 2010 Express version. There are two other things you need to know before you can start making a computer game and really that has to do with the design phase as we may call it when you're designing the game. We need to know three things all in all. We've already said we know what the platform is going to be. It's going to be running on Windows. In fact I'm running on Windows Vista at the moment and uh, that's why I'm using a uh, 2010 version of Visual C Sharp. If I had Windows 8 I could use Visual C Sharp 2012 Express version. We can call that also by another name called the environment. So it's the environment of the game is where it's uh, going to be executed, run, played. So of the three things, what are the other two? Well, a very very important one and kind of obvious really is the story that the game has what's the game about? Is it a game where you shoot people dead? Is it a game where you drive a car? Is it a game where you are killing space invaders? Is it a game where you are walking through a maze and trying to discover the exit or the center of the maze? Is it a, an adventure game in a house where you're seeking treasures or in an underground cavern cave where you're seeking gold uh, but avoiding dragons. Uh, the stories are of course endless that you can have for a particular game but you do need to have a story for a game. The story allows the player to have a purpose in the game. At some point to it why move the mouse? Why press the key? Why move the paddle? Um, what's the point of it all? Even for example a board game like chess has a story. There is a king and you have to protect the king perhaps with pawns which are like soldiers and if you um, you have knights riding on horses and your soldiers can do battle and um, if you're not careful you can lose pieces that is you can lose your horse, your knight, your rider and if you are skilled or lucky you can actually call check that is capture the king um, if you're not indeed captured yourself and the eventual idea is of course to get checkmated or be check, checkmate your opponent's king. Checkmate being imprisoned the king. So chess is essentially a story of a battle between armies. Now these pieces in the computer playing um, me, I'm white and the computer is playing black, these are my uh, component of my avatar. There, I'm represent, representing me and that queen is representing black and so on. Now I'm in check. So we need a story, we need the environment and there's one other thing we need which is to know who the player is. That is what age the player is in particular. Um, the game I'm going to design here is going to be for very young people. We might call them infants, children. Um, around 10 would be quite old for this game I'm thinking of doing because 
um, I'm going to do it in what we call two dimensions that is just on the screen and one level um, the player um, really can't be too sophisticated that is um, the game has got to be simple uh, and yet still entertaining and the story can uh, be suitable for such a young child uh, something to say about these three things you need to know about a computer game before you can even design it in terms of ordinary applications we have the three things you need to know to make an application we need to have knowledge of the user of the application we need to know what the purpose of the application is and we need to know what the application will run or how to execute it so with a game it's just the same we need to know the player the story and the environment or the platform but they're really a game is just an example of a computer application it, albeit in a particular genre as it were of entertainment where a game is almost by definition for leisure or pleasure rather than business and an application is almost by definition for business or a task now having decided the platform we know what the programming language could be and it's going to be Visual C Sharp as I've got here and uh, we also need to learn that language and the purpose of my tutorials is not to teach C Sharp so let's look at a place you could find out more I would recommend this free C Sharp net tutorial um, at homeandlearn.co.uk on the web it's um, rather useful and it tells you really how to download and what to download to uh, run the programming language that I'm going to be using uh, behind this tutorial um, it gives you lots of interesting and useful exercises to do however I'm not going through those I'm going to show you how to write make implement a game in C sharp so I'm going to have as my um, player say a seven year old I'm going to have as my story that a seven year old boy or girl is running about the screen from left to right catching apples that are falling from a tree catching them in a basket and I'm going to call my game catcher and it's going to run on a Windows operating system so what next let's say I've learned how to use C sharp I've got C sharp downloaded and I know the name of my game well we can start right now and pick it up in the next tutorial session so first of all I'm going to say file new project I want a Windows form application and it will machinate way um, and create that and uh, I think it's done its work now I'm going to make my screen a little bit bigger that is my form I should say um, the error list box down here unfortunately is going to show errors I say unfortunately <laughs> really it's fortunate because it has helped me to obviously make it right but um, it is inevitable when you're making a game you're going to make some mistakes on this um, area pane window whatever one wants to call it here it's just going to show me the components of my development and I'm just going to push that down because I really need all that information at the moment here I've got properties of elements which as you will see are actually quite important anyway for the moment let's have that as the form we know the name I'm going to call it catcher so I can do that straight away I can go into properties for the form one and I can give it the name catcher up here I say name it's not really a name it's actually a text property but it's now got that name up here and I'm going to also name the entire uh, I could name the entire project after this 
I've given it the default name um, of Windows Forms Application 1 at the moment. When I say I gave it, it's kind of a default name. Let's save everything, save all. Now when I save all, it asks me what do I really want to call it, just in case I want to give it a different name, which I do. So I want to call it Catcher. Uh, I could call it Catcher Game, I'll just call it Catcher. And the location is going to be in a uh, C sharp directory that I've got on my J drive. That is um, everything I need to do. I'm going to say save that. Now, all of that has taken about 10 minutes, so I'm going to leave it there for the first tutorial. In the second tutorial, we're going to take it further and we're going to actually make start making the game.